Okay, so think, talking about in-domain versus out-of-domain generalization, we've talked about this question of sample efficiency, and we saw that using this task-specific component was actually a problem, okay? Because we have to fine-tune them on each task. We have to fine-tune them, and they are like limiting how efficient we can do. Like they are like increasing the number of samples we need to learn the target task that we have at the end. And this is actually related to the rise of energy. So let me show you a little bit, okay? Um, <clears throat> Recently, we've seen more and more text-to-text -text model. This was starting by, uh, started by this nice uh, Salesforce pa paper by uh, Brian McCain, which was called uh, the Natural Language Decathlon. It was a task, it was a benchmark where you have like 10 tasks, the Decathlon, and you have to uh, just, they were all cast in the same format, in the same framework. They were all cast as question answering uh, task. So if you have translation, you would have a question which is, translate something, translate this from English to German, and then you have a context which is the English sentence, okay? When you have summarization, we'll actually formulate that as a textual uh, input, which is summarize this, and then you have a, 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 um, the news example. A new model has to generate the output. It has to generate the translated, the, the, the German translation. It has to generate the summarization. So it's not classification task like we saw before, but it's generation task. GPT-2 is a big model that make a lot of PR, but was also a very, very nice paper called um, <coughs> Multitask Language Model are Unsupervised Multitask Learners. And there was a lot of zero-shot experiment in this. How do you do zero-shot with GPT-2? You do the same. You actually formulate your task with a prompt, which is, for instance, summarize or, or for summarization they did what they what they called the uh, tldr too too long didn't read and then uh, they put the the sentence to summarize and the model is a, actually trained to generate it's not trained it's just zero shot the model tried to generate some plausible uh, completion and the plausible completion will be a summary and GPT-2 is quite good at that. A lot of tasks can be formulated like that, like the Lambda dataset, which is a very interesting task where you try to predict the last word. And the last word of sentence is something that is not explicitly said in the beginning, but you see um, just uh, implied. For instance, people are talking about giving birth, but you, you don't say the, 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 it's not explicitly mentioned in the, in the paragraph. And at the end, you have to talk, you have to complete with the word pregnancy, okay? So the model has to understand the underlying meaning of the sentence to be able to put in the right word. So this is a completion task. It can be formulated as text generation where you generate the next word. And we've seen a rise of models like this, which are trained to generate word and where we actually recast our usual classification or our usual NLP task as text to text, -to -text generation task, okay? And we've seen that in a lot of recent models. Facebook BART model was pre-trained with a text-to-text -text objective. So it was pre-trained by giving it a uh, corrupt text where you have like randomly dropped tokens, randomly dropped words, or the text is shuffled. You can see all the, the objectives here. And the model is trying to regenerate the clean text from that, okay? So you can formulate this denoising objective as a text-to-text -text generation, as a corrupt text to clean text generation. And they even train a multilingual model called Embart on this. So we, we have this both model now uh, on Transformers, so you can try them. And these models, they are trained in this framework. And the most famous one is the recent T5 Google. It's mostly famous because for some time, well, a <laughs> short amount of time, it was the biggest model. So the 11 billion parameter model. And T5 is pre-trained and fine-tuned like this. It's pre-trained with a denoising objective, like the one we saw for Bart. And it's fine-tuned in a text-to-text -text format. So, uh, for instance, on glue task like MNLI, you have to predict containment or contradiction, and you will have you will formulate your task as a text input. And although we have to generate containment, the word containment or the word contradiction. Why is this great? This is great because with this we don't really have to fine-tune any additional layer. Okay. We don't actually add any layer to our model. We take the same architecture for pre-training and for fine-tuning. There is nothing to fine-tune or to train from scratch, which means that in theory, we can do zero shot because no weights needs to be fine-tuned on the, on the target task, okay? The model is ready to be used on the target task. 
Now, usually this means we need to do like target, target task inform pre-training. Like we need during the pre-training, that's what is very interesting in the T5 paper that you can read as well. During the pre-training, they kind of, during pre-training, they prepare the model for this task by giving some example of the fine tuning as well. So the model knows that it will be asked to do some entailment or contradiction pre uh, question. But then you can have zero shots thing. And actually, when you look at uh, what Sam Bauman is saying about glue and super glue is their successor to this task, he said that it's actually really hard now to find some data sets where actually we can have a good uh, classification, like a good NLU task where you actually can prevent this model to reach human performances, where this model don't even already reach human performances. And usually they reach human performances because they are taking advantage of this fine tuning task. Okay? So, in general, we should, I think we should really focus on zero shot adaptation for transfer learning, like zero shot or very few sample efficiency zero adaptation. Okay. I, I hope that's the takeaway of all this discussion.